In this video, we remove the carburetor from the XR650L and fix the pulse generator in stop motion. And we pay tribute to one of my favorite channels on YouTube. Stick around. Hi, I'm Francois from AdventureBikeTroop.com. In this video, I want to give a big shout out to George Corrales from Soup Classic Motoring. Go check out his channel if you haven't seen it before. He does awesome stop motion videos where he uh, restores an old Mercedes W123, a Range Rover and a Lotus Esprit amongst others. Uh, and it's just a pleasure to watch and he's such a nice guy. George is so inspiring and motivating and always trying to get us normal DIY mechanics out there to work on our machines. So without further ado, here's me removing the carburetor. Now removing the carburetor from an XR650L is not a big job. It usually takes between 10 and 15 minutes if you've done it before, which I've done a couple of times uh, when I did the Davis mod. You can check out um, and my video and learn from my mistakes up here somewhere. The next thing we're going to look at is the bike wouldn't start, it cranked, wouldn't start, and I suspected the pulse generator because I measured um, and found an open circuit where it should have been between, I think, 417 and 523 ohms. So here's some of that.
Now, in the end, uh, it ended up not being the pulse generator. It was a bit dirty uh, with metal filings. I cleaned it up and it measured good after that. Now, unfortunately, the gasket on the clutch cover was damaged, so I had to make a new one. It's difficult to find one locally. They're expensive and they have to come from overseas, which takes six weeks at least to get here. So I just made my own one from a roll of flexoid gasket paper that was kicking around here in the shed. I didn't film this because by this time uh, the stop motion was just taking too long. So George, I don't know how you do it. Big respect. Um, but And please keep making those awesome videos. But the next time I wanted to start the bike, it was dead again. So I gave the CDI a smack and it started right up. I did order a new one. It just arrived today. Put it in the bike. Started first time. So that was probably the problem all along. And I remember mentioning in a previous video where I had a no start condition that it was dirty terminals and a flat battery. Now it could have been partly due to that. But both times I did smack the CDI as well just to, for good measure. So... That is absolutely the wrong way to go about it. Not methodical at all. I did mention it before. Um, it was just a haphazard trying different things at once and then never really knowing which one was the problem. So please learn from that and just test one thing at a time. Isolate the problem and fix it without wasting your time and money. Uh, thank you for joining and I'll see you next week.